Hi everybody, I'm George Call here to introduce a three-part series called My Favorite Place. And um, this is block in day step one, and that is to cover the whole canvas with a value color based on about four or five basic shapes. So we first go in with shapes and then we go in with color value. And then we did some softening of edges. So, I explain how to do that step by step, hang in there, this is not rocket science, and uh, you can do this. So, what else can I say? I hope I can finish this thing in three parts. <laughs> it's an 18 by 24. You don't have to go that big. Uh, some of my Zoom students were doing uh, um, 12 16s and that kind of stuff, 11 by 14s. That's fine too. So, um, get outside and paint. Uh, you're welcome to paint with me every week. I'll try to have a tutorial for you every week. And uh, so the more you get in front of that canvas, the better you're going to get. Get some critiques from um, people who are better than you and uh, see what they have to say. All right. Enough said by me. Let's get to today's painting. All right. Bye-bye. Good morning and welcome to part one of a three-part series. And the title is uh, My Favorite Place. So uh, I'm George Call here in Loveland, Colorado, and we're going to start this series. Excuse me for moving my stool around here. By explaining that um, this is a little different. Instead of having a, a traditional landscape with a foreground, middle ground, background, we're kind of like right inside the woods here. So we still have to try to figure out where those shapes are. But, but before we get too far down the road, I want to explain I have my basic palette here of ultra blue, permanent red medium, lemon yellow, two piles here. One's a little contaminated from last week. Naples yellow deep and cold gray. I also have uh, burnt sienna, viridian, and yellow ochre, which are student grades. And that's what those are. So to make a drawing color, I want to just start with shapes. And because we have traditionally done that, it's just a way we try to get our heads around to divide this painting up. This is block and day, and part of block and day is to figure out where the shapes are. The challenge about these jungle paintings is you're kind of right in the woods. Where do you figure out where the shapes are. Let's do that step by step today. First we make the mixture of ultra blue, burnt sienna, gray, and some white. I'm going to add just a little bit of turp. And what I see, and I'm sorry for I have some scribbles here, started a little early on my 18 by 24 painting is that instead of drawing where the stream might be the most obvious place to start is to train your eye to look at where is the big divide here see it this part right here the painting where my hand is seems to be in the cool in the shadow this upper part where my hand is seems to be in the light so I'm going to make that as my first divide, right through the warms and the cools, right here. And that's what this is. This is the light side. This is the cool, uh, cool side. This is the shadow. This is the light. Now, let's put a bank on that side, right here. And then I see this stream, oh, I guess about halfway up. So and about the center of the painting. So I'll put that right in here. I thought it might have been a little lower. So I'm going to erase that original line. And then I have another bank that comes in here. Oop, only about halfway. And that's how I'm going to divide up the lower half. And 
So this is all going to be in shadow. There's going to be a little bit of light coming through here, but this is all shadow through here. Shadow, 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 shadow. So I'm squinting at the same time I'm looking at all this, and that's what I am in the process of doing. So with that, let's use the bigger brushes. So I'm going to make more blue, more gray, more white. More gray. And you can see I thoroughly mix that mixture. I'm going to add some more turp to this. It's pretty thin. I want it thin. And I'm going to put some dark in down here also on that bank. I know you see light coming through there, and so be it. And I'm just going to go over it anyway. I'll knock it out with a paper towel here in a little bit. I think I see a little bit of cool up here too. But what I want to do is solidly put this in. Not have a lot of missed spots. I mean, I am covering this with this value color. I'm going to add some more blue to this and some lemon yellow, some yellow ochre, ultra blue, and I think over here there's kind of a pine tree type thing. Add some more blue to that, some white. And I'm going to add this very dull green color to this area up in here. It's a pretty high. It kind of connects to this cool, cool color, cool value right here. I think some of this tree is shadow and some of it's tree, but I'm just, I don't want to delineate any of that. I may have made that too big. Okay, so if I did, let's just take some of that off the bottom with a paper towel and turp. And it's a little squattier, so I'll knock off some of the top. All right, let's move this over. I'm cleaning my palette. And let's see here. And let me... When I'm going from cools to warms, I want to make sure I can have a clean mixy, mixing area. I should be changing brushes too, but... I'm going to put that in the turf, see if that cleans it out a little bit. All right, let's make the next mixture, which will be Naples. Yellow ochre. White. More white. A little bit of gray. More white. And that'll be the mixture. 
Again, that was Naples, yellow ochre, white, and a touch of gray. I'm going to change brushes. Going back to another number 10. Hey, Anthony, could you uh, mute, please? And I'm going to apply that in these light places. Again, I'm putting in this thin and I'm covering the whole canvas with, with paint. That's the goal here in step one, lock in. With the line drawing, we figured out where these basic shapes would be, the, the shadows and the lights. And that's what we're doing. I think this is too bold, so I'm going to soften this with uh, running some the Naples light over the top of it. And I'm going to lighten this a little bit with running some Naples over the top of it. And again, I want to try to cover the canvas with paint. So you see a lot of the white stuff peeking through, just get some of that covered up with your flat side of your brush. You know what I think I'm going to do is change my blues here a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can get some cerulean here for the river. I'm going to do a cerulean ultra blue color in there. I'm going to put my warm brush off to the side. And I'm going to move my warms over to one side. It's so thin, I don't think I can do much with it or save much of it. All right, so I'm going to mix some ultra blue. I'm sorry, ultra blue and cerulean. I'm going to add just a touch of white, a touch of gray, a touch of gray, more white, more cerulean, more ultra blue. Pretty color. And put that in there. So you can see the step I'm taking here, I'm just really basic breaking this down into shape one, two, three, and four. You know, good painting is just four, five, six shapes. That's all you need for a good painting sometimes. I hope this is going to be one of them. Of course, when I start a painting, I always think this is going to be my very best I've ever done in my life. I'm still thinking that. All right, it's time for me to get back and start thinking more about values. What's going to be darker? What's going to be lighter? So I'm stepping back. And I need to get more darks in. So let's do that now. Darks mean cool, so I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to get some ultra blue. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Viridian. A little bit of red. Yeah. 
All right, so I see some more dark on this bottom of this tree and over here. Ultra blue, burnt sienna, viridian, a little bit of gray. Can I add more blue? Ultra blue. And there's some dark in here. Oh, lost my image. You can get this image from my website. I just put it up the other day. GeorgeCallGreatArt.com and look for a thing that says photo references and you'll find find this. Keep having to make this blue, burnt sienna, viridian basically, a little bit of gray. And whacking these things in here. And I see a lot of dark over in this area here. So I'm going to really lay it in. More blue, more burnt sienna, more viridian. A little bit of turp. And let's get this in here. I'm picking up some of the light here, so I'm losing my dark, my contamination when I get up there. And I see some good darks down in here. Make some more blue, burnt sienna, viridian, red. The combination of uh, red and viridian really can darken things up. I think my stream's a little too big. I have to. Shrink that down a little. And I'm not going to cover up this light area so much. I'm going to go above it. More blue, burnt, viridian, red. Too much red, I have to go back. Add more blue. And here we go. I'm going to step back and look at my shapes. As you can see, I've really been laying on those darks. And I'm going to add a few more darks right in here. And I'm running some over the top of some of the warms. I'm going to add more ceruleum up in that area. Ceruleum and white. That's pretty. And ceruleum over the, the warm Naples is really pretty. And I'll bring some of that down in here too. I think I'm a little too generous with my light down here. I'll add some more dark. I can get light in there later. And I want to go right up to the edge here. That's how I paint my monitor, which I don't like to do. When I turn off my monitor and I look at it, it's just covered in paint splatter. All right, so I'm going to do a little lightning in a few places. That means paper towel work and some maybe up in here. Just give it a thin light. It's 
soften this edge between the two. Paper towels come in handy in this painting business, particularly at this stage. It's about the only stage I use it. I also use a knife to merge the, the edges together like doing this, as you can see. It gets rid of those strong brush marks. Okay, how are we doing on time? Good! So we've covered the whole canvas with paint. So let's get some strong stuff in here. Let me see, I need to bring these darks, I think, down just a little bit more. And I'm going to put some darks on the bank. And I know there's some lights. I still have a little bit of light here, and I'm going to put some of that down here. All right. I'm going to pick up the darks and see if I can save some of it. Put it right over there up on the glass palette and get ready for the next step. So since the paint is all wet and gooey, let's see if I can get some of those tree shapes in here. So I'm going to get back to my number 10 that uh, I use for doing the worms. I'm going to get it full of turp. So I put it in my turp and then I just kind of cleaned off the excess. Let me see if I can get some tree shapes in here. And with a wet brush, I'm just kind of removing some of the the darks. And I'm going to keep doing that. For the rest of our taping. But you hear that tapping, I'm just going back in the turf. I'm getting rid of my contamination in my brush and kind of reloading it with more turp. I want to do some smaller ones. This is a smaller one. Flip the brush over, do some more of that, and do some crooked ones over here too. See, these are all together. I'm going to make another smaller clump right in here. I think they are actually above this area. So I'll make them above. a lot of time with these little guys. I'll probably lose them, but at least that we can kind of get a faint idea where some of these important shapes are here. So what I'm going to do is do more of this on this side in this big dark, but while we still have time, let's see what we can do on this side. Let me soften some of these bold strokes I have, and let's see what this does on this side. And there's a whole bunch of this stuff back in here. So this is taking a, a really nice sharp brush. See, it's got a nice edge to it. 
and they come in handy for doing this type of stuff. I learned this, I started in watercolor, and this is what we did in watercolor years ago. I had such a horrible teacher, I quit art for 10 years before I got back in, and I said when I get back in, I'm never going to do watercolor, because that teacher probably hurt myself more than anybody else. But I started in oils when I got back, and so I used some of the same techniques. And I think there's a big old tree right up in here. Let me see if I can get my chin away from the camera and get this big fella in here. Then he goes dark, I think, when she gets in the shadow. There's, uh, let's see what we can do about this. Looks like there's some fallen down aspen down here. Boy, it's really hard to get this stuff cleaned off, right? There we go. That did it. All right. I know I have a little bit of light left over, and I'll put some of that along the bank in a few places. But that should do it. What I'm going to do off camera is do more of these limbs and uh, so I don't bore the heck out of you. And um, we'll call that block in. Okay, so we covered this canvas with a lot of paint, or a lot of thin paint. And now we're, we're doing just branches. Do one more of this big fella over here on the right. All right, with that, that's part one of my favorite place. Zoom students, stay in there. I'm going to say goodbye to the YouTubers and you screens, and thank you so much for coming by, and we'll see you in part two. All right, bye-bye.